Okay, um, first we'll go over some results from our last video, our last test. Um, as you would have seen um, with the rotor and the magnets, we had a power out of uh, 74 milliamps at 12.48 volts, 923.52 milliwatts. Our power in was 180 milliamps at 12.47 volts, which equaled 2.246 watts. So our efficiency with the rotor and magnets was 41.22%. Without the rotor, um, our output was much the same. We went up uh, 0.2 of a volt over that time. Still the 74 milliamps at 12.49 volts gave us 924.26 milliwatts on our output. Our input was 240 milliamps at 12.47 volts, which gave us 2.992 watts on the input for a total efficiency of 30.88%. So without the rotor, even though the output stayed the same, we've seen the input go up, even though that coil was tuned, um, well, the duty cycle was um, such that we switched that coil off at the exact point of saturation and anything um, higher in duty cycle resulted in no more output only resulted in a higher input so the frequency the duty cycle for that frequency for that particular coil um, was trimmed up to spot on um, and like I said without the rotor we had an efficiency of 30.88% with the rotor in our spinning magnets we had an efficiency of 41.22% so um, over 10% more efficient with our spinning magnets. Okay, so um, what have we got here? Now we are actually running it as a pulse motor, minimal signal generator. The transistor is now being switched by what is called the trigger coil. Um, <clears throat> and this is just a straight off the bat one. Uh, I've spent no time adjusting the distance between the magnets and the rotor. Um, sorry, the rotor and the coil. Um, I have a 1K pod on here. It is turned right up to full 1K. And, um, well, it wasn't actually. It's down a little bit. leave it at that anyway. Okay so what we want to do <clears throat> is break the 50% electrical power in and out uh, barrier. I'm not going to take into account um, any mechanical work that that motor may do. We're simply looking at electrical efficiency at the moment. <clears throat> okay um, like I said we are now running it as the SSG pulse motor, the only thing it is missing is the uh, neon bulb across our transistor so hopefully our lead won't fall off the battery otherwise it will be bulb by transistor you, have, you can see that I have added the diode across the emitter base but I've put it before the 100 ohm resistor because believe it or not um, in the SSG circuit they have the base emitter diode directly across the base emitter. Now I have found that by putting this base emitter diode across the emitter and on the other end of the 100 ohm resistor that is on your base, I actually get slightly higher output with a slightly lower input. So something uh, that might be useful to some of you guys that are uh, really into these pulse motors. Alright, um, so now we're going to try and break the 50% efficiency barrier and um, I've had some guys saying oh yeah yeah I've done that well that's all well and good but um, present the data that I'm um, presenting and show us uh, a little bit of proof um, and then we can talk turkey and this is by no means trimmed up to its optimum performance yet um, before we go any further just a uh, little bit of info on that coil um, that coil is the very first coil I ever wound for the very first uh, Adeni pulse motor I ever built 
and that was back in 1999 as you can see um, what I used for the core was um, pieces of the uh, larger gauge old coat hangers which we made from the softer wire and um, I laminated them uh, simply by dipping each piece into varnish letting them dry pushed them all into the coil sealed it up with uh, two pack epoxy today that is still one of the best performing coils I've ever built and it's over 16 years old very first coil I made so uh, that one will be never getting pulled apart okay so on with our power measurements which once again we'll write down okay so let's have a look at our power in our battery voltage 12.5 let's say dropping down 12.4 9 um, 12.48 23 milliamps going into the battery <coughs> don't be concerned with that because um, as this battery slowly goes down milliamps from a rather large battery we'll run this motor for a long period of time before um, that sees any kind of real voltage drop across it okay so a nice clean waveform for a pulse motor and um, easy for the scope to read you can see we are at 146.7 Hertz um, as I just trimmed that pot up, it's going a little bit quicker than it was before. I calculated at 140 hertz. Divided by 8, because that's how many uh, poles we have on our magnet. Times that by 60. And we had about an RPM of 1,050. So, um, not extremely fast, but not slow either. It's running quite smoothly. Alright, so our power in is our mean value across our 1 ohm CVR. 200 millivolts, so it's 200 milliamps. At our battery voltage of 12.49. Okay, so our power out is looking quite fantastic at the moment. I think we're going to break this 50% barrier. Um, straight off the bat, without any fine tuning, we have 119 milliamps, very steady. At a battery voltage of 12.69 to 12.7. Let's go on the low side. We'll call it 12.69. So 119. MA at 12.69 volts. That'll be 12.7 by the time we finish this video, but we'll leave it at that. Um, and that is our power in and power out. Everything's um, very stable. Extremely stable waveform for pulse motor, really. Of that. Okay, so um, a quick uh, in the head calculation. Um, we can see that we've got more than half um, of the current coming out from what we've got going in. 12.49, 12.69, and you can see we have a uh, higher voltage at that. Uh, more than half current so it's quite easy to say we've just broken the 50% efficiency barrier alright uh, what can we do to make it more efficient well I can slot the holes in the coil and we can move that backwards and forwards change the distance between the rotor and the coil and uh, see what happens there 
I'm going to put a 5k pot on here, trim it up a little more, see what happens. Um, and then maybe start mucking around with caps on the base uh, meter side of things. So, uh, we'll see how far we can take it. But running very sweet. Alright, thanks for watching, and uh, once again, we'll see you next video. Having a lot of fun with this at the moment. Um, apparently 30% was about as good as we'd ever get, and I think we've just blown that out of the water. And, um, I think you would have to agree that the measurements are quite accurate. You can see that it's very stable, thanks to this nice large cap, which once again is across the positive side of the battery, and the um, back side or the output side of our diode that is on our collector um, so this moves up this captures the uh, high voltage flyback stores it and um, that is of course converted into a nice steady voltage and current which the ammeter can read quite accurately and of course our scope will be fairly accurate and we can say that that 200 milliamps is fairly accurate because we have a nice, stable, steady waveform and a very stable RPM. So um, <clears throat> about as good as we can do with the equipment we've got. But um, at this point in time, I think the equipment that we're using and the way we are using it is more than adequate to get very close to accurate um, power measurements. Alright guys, um, yeah, have fun, enjoy, we'll see you next video, and good night from me.